One of the first applications of calculus we encounter is the idea of velocity. Because remember, the derivative measures the instantaneous rate of change. And, and so a change in position over time is velocity. So here's an example we have. Where we have a marble is dropped from the top of Billiken's Tower 590 feet above the ground. So this is a picture of this. We have some sort of building like this. And we know that this is 595 feet. And we're dropping some sort of marble. Okay, so the marble's going down this way. And so what we'll do is we'll make the top of the tower zero and the bottom of the tower 595 feet. And so uh, your position is actually how far you have fallen. Okay, so well, again, what we want to know is the velocity. And velocity, remember, is the is um, distance over time. And so the instantaneous rate of change, or the instantaneous velocity at four seconds, what they want to know is if we had some sort of position formula, if this was position, s of t, then your change in position, or your derivative of s, is your velocity, which we'll call v of t. So all I have to do is figure out a position formula and then find its derivative. Um, now, in general, for a free-falling object, um, the position is going to be one-half your gravity constant t squared. The reason I mention the gravity constant is because if you're dealing with feet, then your, your um, gravity constant is 32 uh, feet per second squared. That's your acceleration due to gravity. In meters, your gravity is 9.8 feet, I mean, I'm sorry, meters per second squared. Okay, so depending on your context, your position formula is going to look a little different. So here, since I'm dealing with feet, my position f uh, formula is 1 half 32 t squared or 16 t squared. And, and that will uh, stay the same for any velocity question dealing with feet. Um, here we are ignoring air, res air resistance, which is a big deal, but we're just trying to get our feet wet on this. Okay, so now the derivative of that, we know, would be the limit as h approaches 0 of s of t plus h minus s of t all over h. So that's going to be uh, 16 t plus h quantity squared minus 16 t all over h. And I can easily FOIL this out. And here, obviously, I'm taking the limit as h approaches 0 of this. So I get the limit as h approaches 0 of uh, 16 times t squared plus 2th plus h squared, right? Because you have to FOIL out the t plus h quantity squared minus 16 t all over h. 16t uh, squared, sorry. Now if you'll notice what will happen if as you distribute the 16 across you have a 16t squared minus a 16t squared. So what we end up with is the limit as h approaches 0 of 16 times 2 which is 32th plus 16h squared all over h and now since every term has a common factor of h. I can cancel out my h's. Finally, I have the limit as h approaches 0 of 32t plus 16h. And as h goes to 0, I end up with just 32t. So there is my velocity function. Now the question was asking is what what is velocity at 4 seconds? So here all I have to do is plug in 4. I end up with 32 times 4, which would be 128, and my units here are feet per second. Feet per second. So there's my solution. All right, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just let me know. Okay, now as a, a second question to this, we want to know how fast is the ball traveling when it hits the ground? Okay, so this is a two-part question, actually. We need to first find uh, when does it hit the ground? Okay, so when does that happen? And if we go back to looking the way we set this up, another way of asking that question is when does your position hit 595? So that's that's what we actually have to solve here is 
when does your position formula, which is S of t equal, which is um, 16 t squared, when does that equal 595? Okay, so uh, this is just a simple quadratic equation. You get t squared equals 595 over 16. So you take the square root of that, which remember would be plus or minus. But since we're dealing with only with positive time, we don't have to really worry about the negative. So here we end up with t being approximately this, this square root, which if you plug in your calculator, you should get around 6.098 seconds. So that, that's how long it takes to hit the ground when you drop this marble. Okay, so then what we really need to know then is our, um, what is V of T for this time, right? How fast was I traveling, was this marble traveling at this time? Well, I've already calculated what my derivative is. So all I need to do is say V of 6.098, which is the same thing as saying 32 times 6.098, and if you work out those calculations, you should get around 195.14. Again, this is feet per second. All right, and there's my solution. I hope this makes sense. Um, if you have any questions, again, let me know. And remember, uh, you do need to keep up with your, with your units. If you're using feet, then your position, again, is going to be 1 half times 32. Uh, which is 16 t squared. If you're using meters, then your position formula is going to be 1 half times 9.8 t squared, which ends up being about 4.9 t squared. All right, again, if you have any questions, let me know. I'd be glad to help, and thanks for watching. <laughs>